privilege to be with you this morning, this second Sunday after the resurrection, this sixth Sunday into the COVID quarantine. God is here and God is there. Hear these words from Psalm, Psalm 99, that calls us into worship. The Lord reigns, let the nations tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim. Let the earth shake. Great is the Lord in Zion. He is exalted over all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. The king is mighty. He loves justice. You have established equity. In Jacob, you have done what is just and right. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. Would you worship with me this morning? Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. From your passion and pride, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's side. There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Put your hands together. Would you be wider, much wider than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in this life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, Wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the... Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. In power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Say it again, saints. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. The Lord is here, saints. And I wonder if you might uh, continue in worship as we sing this song. Savior is in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer, and just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, as Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow
the stormy blast. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. So rejoice, rejoice, O Christian. Lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek him, help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. Oh, he lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life now. In that second verse of this song, it speaks to us right now in this season of COVID-19. Listen to the words or sing them with me. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blasts. Of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along like never way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how. Is he living in your heart? Is he living in your heart? Hallelujah. This next song, uh, oh yes, it takes me back. Yeah. 
who have had loved ones go on to be with the Lord, we pray for a spirit of comfort right now. For those who are in the battle with any kind of disease, God, we pray for comfort and we pray for healing, God. We pray that you would be with families that are stricken with the coronavirus and with other illnesses too, God, trusting that you are able to heal and deliver. And God, we trust that you would give us the strength to make it second by second, minute by minute, moment by moment, and day by day. We trust, God, that you sit high and you sit low, and we're just ecstatic that you would continue to call us friend as, as hypocritical as we've been, as sinful as we've been. You have continued to love us unconditionally and so God right now we bring those things to you that separate us from you those things that we have in our hearts and our minds those sins that we committed that we know about and those that we did not know about we lift them up to you God and say here take them take them Jesus because we don't want them anymore sometimes that's difficult because sometimes we don't want to give them up, God. We just are real about that. But we trust that you know best and you want what's best for us. So we pray that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, in our own lives as it relates to our own insufficiencies and downfalls. So here are our prayers of confessions as the music continues to play.
hear our prayer, O oh Lord. God, your word declares that you will remember our sins no more. It also declares that whom the Son has set free is free indeed, so we trust that you would allow us to walk in that newfound freedom of forgiveness that we have, bringing our sins to you, God. So hear our prayers, and thank you for the gift of forgiveness. give up. Don't. God's got you. Hallelujah. alone in Christ alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of Fresh. 
That'll preach and that will comfort. Remember that. Yeah. 
Jesus Christ, my King. Powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Powerful name, powerful name. The name of Jesus. How lovely on the mountain are the feet of him who brings good news. that we should be drawn to him. He was despised and we took no account of him. And now
a statement. It's a fact. Our God reigns. Would you join us in some announcements and then an offering? We will take you to the screen and it will share with you a couple of ways to uh, support the ministry during this time. Uh, Elder Brad has put on a nice little video in our Facebook message uh, with a little singing. I think he's trying to change my jobs. Pray, saints. Pray heavily, mightily. <laughs> Listen, we do want to offer our condolences. There are several people um, who have had deaths, um, and we just want to acknowledge them and know that we are praying for you. The Harris family, the Midas family, I'm going to get in trouble. I didn't have my bulletin. The Midas family, the Ralton family. And if you have had someone who uh, has passed away, put their name down there. We will pray for the comfort of your family and theirs. And if you are sick or you have some sick among you, please let us know. You can let us know at our website. You can let us know right here on the Facebook. And we will include that in our Tuesday Zoom prayer uh, when our prayer warriors get together and bombard heaven. Christ the Lord is risen indeed. Amen. We have, we have inspected the place where his body once laid. And since last we proclaimed he is risen, we've come to realize that he is indeed not there. 2,000 years later, amen, we can declare that Christ our Lord has risen. Amen. And so we're grateful to God for the opportunity to participate in the life of Christ in all the ways that matters most to God and that blesses us so abundantly. Welcome, Maple Avenue. Welcome this morning. I, I, as I'm sitting here and I'm looking out over empty pews and looking into the um, lens of the camera, I'm squinting and hoping and wishing somehow I could look upon your beautiful faces this morning. Uh, we do miss your presence. We do miss um, seeing you and being together, but we're grateful to God for the platform of social media that allows us um, to continue to be together, always together. Listen, I've been thinking about you. I've been praying for you. I know that many of you are having a difficult time trying to navigate um, educational purposes and responsibilities relative to, to your children. And so I want you to know that if that's you, you're not alone. Um, there are plenty of uh, others who are also in that same place. So when you cry out, Lord, have mercy, do so on behalf of not just yourself and your children, but on behalf of others who are in the same place. There are so many others among us also who just are, have cabin fever, just you know, just feel like you just can't wait one more day to just um, to, 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 um, endure this, this experience. And for you, we, we pray for grace and we pray for, com we pray for compassion of your loved ones who might be inclined to want to be annoyed. But uh, your, your, um, your anxiety is real. Your, um, your concern is real. And, um, and so we pray for you. We lift you up, certainly during this time. Um, for those who are um, under the weather, whose health seems to be failing, um, and as CJ said, for those who have had to say farewell to loved ones um, far sooner than we thought, we do want to certainly extend a, a word of condolences to you in addition to the names already spoken, certainly the Yarbrough family. We, um, we're lifting you up in prayer. Uh, certainly um, um, uh, Rakindra I mean, and, um, and uh, Renisha and the, and the Powell family and the Warfield family. We recognize that you've also experienced a loss, and there are so many um, others of us who it might have been a cousin, it might have been a friend from high school, but more and more each day we're starting to hear the stories and the reports of those who have gone on. But thank God we're also hearing reports of those who are coming out of hospitals and who are coming back home and who are recovering, and we're looking around the world and we're seeing the places and spaces where uh, the, the curve is, is dropping and, and people are beginning to slowly um, move back into society. So we want to thank God for the wisdom to know when to do that and how to do that. We continue here at Maple Avenue on Monday, Wednesday, and now also on Friday um, to distribute um, meals, um, food to um, 
uh, along with Holland Public Schools and other uh, local churches and congregations. Um, so we, we have about 70, 75 um, uh, students that are, are fed from here on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So I do want to say a word of thank you to you who have faithfully, who have been volunteering and offering your time. And I shouldn't even say volunteering because we as believers, we don't volunteer, we serve, right? We serve out of gratitude. We serve because God trusts us. We serve because we are the hands and feet of Christ. So we're not volunteering, we're actually serving. So thank you to you all who have um, come forward and have offered your hands and your hearts to serve during this time. And this is, this is not an opportunity to disparage anybody who hasn't, because we all have to make our choices out of wisdom and prayer and faithfulness about when we go out and when we don't and who we leave at home. And we have to manage all of these things in this time. So I don't want anyone to feel ashamed or anything because you haven't been here. But if you have, I just want to say a word of thank you uh, to you. Um, also want to um, continue to be grateful for, um, for Joe, um, our administrative assistant. We had our administrative assistant celebration, awareness, whatever it was this week um, before I returned. And so um, we have to properly, um, Joe, say a word of thank you to you. But I do want to formally thank God for you and for all that you do to hold things together here in this place, whether we're here, whether we're not. Um, all of the, the, the ways in which you go above and beyond in order to be a blessing to us. So if you all think about it, take an opportunity to put a little note on her page, drop a little card in the mail or something that just lets Joe know how much we do appreciate her administrative um, heart and ministry here at Maple Avenue. Know that on Tuesday evenings at 6.30, we do uh, participate, excuse me, at 6 o'clock, we do participate in prayer um, via Zoom. And um, CJ alluded to uh, the prayer warriors who bombard heaven, but all are invited to certainly participate in that. So if you have particular prayer requests you would like for us to consider as we gather, then feel free to send those to the Maple Avenue um, email address that you'll be able to see um, right there. Um, and if you would like to participate in the Zoom request, if you'd like to participate in prayer meeting with us, then we will have that Zoom address or link on our, um, on our Facebook page and on our website so that you can simply click it and you can join in in prayer with us from 6 to about 7.30. So be mindful of that. I do want to invite you, especially this week, um, because of some things that are going to be coming down related to next Sunday, to please watch your email blast, to please watch your Facebook page or, and or our website for information. Next Sunday is the first Sunday, and ordinarily we will be coming to the Lord's table. Obviously, we will not be able to do that together, but Pastor Emily and I and CJ have been working together to come up with something that might be a blessing to us. And so we're going to be communicating about that this week via eblast. Facebook page and website. So please be mindful of those, um, those platforms as uh, means and as ways to um, continue to stay connected and to be prepared for what's coming up next. Um, I, I do want to enter into a time of prayer intercession as we come now to the end of, um, of the month of April. We do so recognizing that this is Sexual Abuse Prevention Month. And so for the time of our prayer of intercession, we want to focus our attention and our prayers and our supplications to God along the lines of those who we know at this particular time, people who are quarantined, people who are isolated, people who are in homes um, and in places where uh, abuse may have already been prevalent. We know that those, those situations have heightened, not only um, in our own communities, but also around the world. So we want to turn our attention to God and be prayerful about that. And these prayers come to us from um, Women in Mission and Ministry Office at the Episcopal Church, from um, William Barclay, Celtic Daily Prayers, and from the Sabbath of Domestic Peace. Let us go to God, bow our heads, humble our hearts in prayer together. Comforting, loving, protecting God. We remember your word. We remember Lot who offered his daughters to a hostile crowd to be raped. Protect women who find themselves in defenseless situations. Men too, oh God. Protect people who are victims of war and of violence. 
Yephetha sacrificed his only daughter to fulfill a vow. Protect children who are victims of cults and misguided beliefs, O God. Tamar, the daughter of David, was raped by her half-brother. Heal the wounds of children who have been violated by those they trusted. To protect his male guest, the virgin daughter of an Ephraimite was given to a crowd to be abused. Hear the cries of people who are battered and abused in their own homes. Susanna was falsely accused of infidelity and condemned to death. May women's voices be heard. Men's voices be heard. Children's voices be heard and believed so that justice may serve them. We hold before you, God, those for whom life is very difficult. Those who have difficult decisions to make and who honestly do not know what is the right thing to do. We hold before you, God, those who have difficult tasks to do and to face and who fear they may fail in them. We hold before you those, O oh God, who have difficult temptations to face and who know only too well that they may fail and fall to temptation if they try to meet them alone. We hold before you, O oh God, those who know that they can be their own worst enemies. We hold before you, God, those who have difficult people to work with, those who have to suffer unjust treatment, unfair criticism, unappreciated work. We hold before you, God, those who are sad because someone they loved has died. And anyone, any who are disappointed in something from which they hoped very much. We are the church, O oh God. We offer ourselves to you, O oh God, our creator. We offer our hands. May we use them to extend a healing touch to comfort sisters and brothers, children, youth, and elderly who are afraid. We offer our eyes and ears. May we see and hear the signs and stories of violence so that all may have someone with them in their pain and confusion. We offer our hearts and our fears. May the hurt and sorrow of the abuse echo within us. We offer our own stories of violence. May we be healed as we embrace each other across distance. We offer our anger. Make it a passion for justice. We offer all our skills. Use our gifts to end violence. We offer our faith, our hope, our love. May our encounters with violence bring us closer to you and to each other. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, who knows the pain of violence. Amen. Amen. And so, this week I will be engaging in a conversation with other around the church about how we can help individuals who might be experiencing violence to communicate that in ways that could, um, that could not be life-threatening for them but also can offer them the peace and the release that they need. So look forward to hearing and seeing more about that. Now we want to certainly thank God for the ways in which God has continued to provide for us in this time. Thank God for, uh, for um, some of us have, have leaned into unemployment, and we know that process has not been easy, but thank God for those of us who have experienced a lifting in that way. Thank God for those of us who are furloughed and are able to be provided for in that way. Thank God for, um, for your giving so that my salary hasn't been changed. Thank God, and so that our staff is able to continue to um, work and to operate in ways that can bless the church and bless this community during this time. So thank God for all of you who continue to, not with coercion or with manipulation, but out of the resources of your own um, heart, have decided to continue to participate in the life of the church through your giving. So we want to invite you to continue to do just that. 
Um, we want you to know, again, that um, Elder Brad, he has provided a, a video there on our uh, Facebook page. So I hope that you will take an opportunity to look into that and to think about, pray about how God might be inviting you to participate in benevolence. That's the giftedness on behalf of those who might be in need of um, a little extra touch or for rent or for mortgage or for some other things. We know that as stimulus checks are coming forward, some of us might receive a stimulus and might in our own rights believe and recognize that it's not something we necessarily need, although it comes our way. So we might want to just donate that to a benevolence fund, and that will be um, adjudicated by our deacons. So thank you for that. But if you want to give your regular offering, we know that there are several ways that you can do that. And so... Um, You'll be able to see on the screen here. You can participate with your tithes and offerings in whatever way God leads. You can do it through Tidely, which is an app that we have been using, but most of you have been using the PayPal app, so that continues to work. Feel free to do that. Checks and money orders, of course, are always um, to be received here at our office. And um, we're, we're working with... Um, I'm going to be having a conversation about maybe sending out envelopes to you all. So if that would be helpful, put a little note right there at the bottom. We'll, make, we'll be mindful of that. But um, in the meantime, we just trust you and invite you to continue to give. And we'll thank God for that now. Holy God, we thank and praise you, God, for your provision. Oh, God, even in times of uncertainty, you are our God. And you continue to pour out the abundance of your blessings and your resources on your people. You are so faithful and trustworthy and true. And so, God, for those in this season and in this time who are having a difficult time knocking on the doors of unemployment or resources that should be coming their way, God, would you open up the doors of abundance on their behalf. God, for those who, who, who are receiving um, benefits in whatever ways they might be coming, who continue to, to be able to have work without, um, without fear of, of, of contamination, God, we thank you, Lord, for those resources and for the privilege to be able to hand out food and, 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 and things for the sake of the community. God, we thank you that you've blessed us to be a blessing. And so, God, would you continue to, to, to provide for we, the mammalie, and for all that participate therein in the life of your church, so that we might give uh, freely and without coercion and not begrudgingly, but that we might be cheerful in our giving of our resources, our time, and our very lives. For Christ's sake, amen. There is a word from the Lord. Amen. Um, often when God is cultivating the word in me in preparation for delivery, songs will come to my mind that um, encourage or inform or that simply remind me of the message that God has given me to relay to the church. And so this is the second time now that I have offered you a playlist of songs that have encouraged me throughout my life. Um, some of them, they're, for you who are more recent um, gospel and um, spiritual music kind of folks, you might say that this, it's old music, um, but I, I, got a, I got an old faith and an old story. And it's not that old, but it might be old to you. <laughs> right, cuz? <laughs> um, old is relative. But anyway, I hope that you can find some some enjoyment in the playlist, and I'd like to hear from you. I'd like to hear if there's a particular song that, that blesses you, encourages you, stirs you, troubles you. I'd like to hear about that, but I'm just happy to, to share it, it with you, and it's right there on the, on the Facebook page, on my Facebook page, and I pray that you will have time to engage in it. The word of the Lord comes to us from John chapter 20, but first let us go to God together in prayer. Great word of life, great light of the world. Speak to us now. Shine upon us, we pray. So when we look, we will see. And when we listen, we will hear. But we don't want to be those who just see and hear. Let our hearts be transformed by the power of your truth. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. And all God's people said amen. 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 Again, the word of the Lord comes to us this morning from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, beginning with verse 24. 
the Gospel of John, chapter 20, beginning with verse 24. I hope that you have your Bibles there in your hand opened up to John 20, beginning with verse 24. And it reads thusly. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and, a, a, um, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed of those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. There are some things that are unbelievable, and yet for some reason we find them easy to believe. I could evoke a certain musing about Clorox and Lysol wipes, but I won't go there. What I will do, though, I will invite you to just simply lean for a second into social media, into the things that people are saying and things that people are are doing at this time, people are often recommending unbelievable things. But somehow we find it easy to believe. The tabloids at the checkout counter tell stories that are unbelievable about stars, about people in other lands. Unbelievable. Yet somehow we can find it easy to believe. In this time, this time of social isolation, when we're apart from each other, it's easy for lies to play in our heads about each other. That's how the enemy works and divides. When we're apart, begins to draw narratives that if we were face to face, we would know were not true. But for some reason, the unbelievable is easy to believe. And then there are some believable things that are really hard to believe. It's hard to believe that we've been apart for 40 days now. In some ways, it seems much longer. It's hard to believe that we will ever be back together again. And it's hard for some of us to believe that one choice to decrease social isolation too soon could result in the death of someone we love. There are some things that are believable, but we just find them hard to believe. Then there are things that we have no need to believe. Like we don't really have a need to believe Jesus rose. I know, wait a minute, before you decide that you're going to move on to somebody else's uh, Facebook Live, just stay with us for a minute. What I'm saying is, unless you're in a place like where the Maasai nomadic people in Kenya are moving from place to place in search of sources of water, 
Unless we have been this level of thirsty, we don't need to believe that Jesus is living water. Unless we are scrounging around at the dump in Guatemala looking for our next meal with growling stomachs and longing desperations, unless we've been that level of hungry, I wonder, I think we don't need to know Jesus as the bread of life. Let's face it, beloved, more developed nations like ours, we sing a good song, we talk a good talk, but I would argue we don't need to believe in Jesus. Now, I know we have this pietistic confession, I believe in Jesus, but also am inclined to challenge this same confession. And I'm going to ask you to ask yourself, How many of you believers even read or study the life of Jesus? How many of us take the time to learn about the historical and biblical Jesus? The one in whom we claim I believe. Well, if we don't, if we we haven't read or studied or taken the time to do this work, then then we haven't really come to believe in in Jesus. We we might believe in the Jesus of the church. We might believe in the Jesus of a certain author that we respect. We might even believe what we want to believe. But a want is not a need. And I submit we don't need to believe in Jesus not as living water, not as the bread of life, maybe not as the savior of the world. We don't need to believe in Jesus as our great example for how to live, how to love, how to live a life in obedience to the Father. We don't need to believe. Not when laws are made to protect us, to maintain right and wrong. We don't need to believe when we don't, um, when when doctors have have, have, have cures and, and we're not even sick and nobody in our family is sick. We don't necessarily need to believe when money is in the bank every two weeks as long as we go to work, as long as life goes on as usual and our confession doesn't force us to do anything, we don't need to believe in the resurrection. Not as long as we can live like, think like, act like people who don't believe. Because you know and I know that there are plenty of good people in the world who don't believe in Jesus as Savior and Lord. Good people who are law-abiding people, generous, hardworking. And many of us, just like them, don't need to believe. And that is okay. I said it is okay. It really is. It's okay with me. It's okay with God for us to admit, to confess, Lord, I don't. Lord, I have not had to. Lord, I find it hard to believe in Jesus. If it's true, I want you to say it. Say it now. Say it kind of under your breath. I find it hard to believe. If you're around other people who you think might judge you. But if you're not, then say it out loud at the top of your lungs if you must. Lord, I don't. Lord, I I, I don't need to. Lord, I find it hard to believe because you're not alone. Thomas was one who found it hard to believe the unbelievable. And he was a living, breathing, walking, standing follower of Jesus in his time. But when the others came into a room filled with fear and uncertainty and social isolation proclaiming Jesus has risen, this may have been the first time for Thomas that he had a need to truly believe. And we can't judge Thomas. I mean, you know, people come to believe in varying ways, right? There are some people who, they hear the invitation. There are some people who emerge from the waters of baptism at whatever age. There are some people for whom when Jesus says, come follow me, like Philip, they just get up and they just follow. 
And we don't know they believe just because they follow, but we know they believe because what they do after they follow. Philip immediately follows and goes and gets his friend. He wants him to believe too. That's what believers do. We testify, we share, we encourage, we invite others to come with us. Levi, tax collector, sitting at the table. Jesus says, come follow me. Gets up, leaves the table, just like that. Some people just believe that way. You just hear it and it compels them and they just, they just go forward with it. And, 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 and you know again that Levi believes because what does Levi then do? He goes to his house and he throws a party and he invites all of his friends to come over and to meet, to engage and to come to believe in Jesus too. Some people just, just it seems like they get the invitation and it just, it just washes over them and they just follow. And then the other folks, kind of like Peter. The Peter was on the boat, put his nets in the water, and Jesus said, hey, why don't you put your net on the other side? He put the net on the other side, and he pulled up more fish than his nets could hold. Some people have a demonstration or an encounter with Jesus that compels them to believe. Peter's mother-in-law had been ill and unto death, and, and Jesus came in and, and raised her from the dead. Peter was a believer because he had had an experience with Jesus. Nathaniel, he's the one that Philip came to and said, hey, come and follow him. And Nathaniel didn't just up and follow just like Philip did. No, Nathaniel had some questions. He, he, didn't quite, he didn't quite believe and doubt became his companion. Can anything good come out of come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come from the place or the person that you're asking me to follow? Then he had, an, he had had an encounter with God that he didn't even know he had had until Jesus said, when you were under that tree, I don't know what happened under the tree, but whatever it was, it made him become a believer. People come, become believers in different ways. But Thomas, Thomas is a very interesting character like a lot of us. Thomas, he had been on the journey with Jesus. But thus far, he had not had the need to believe. This should be an encouragement for those of us who've been in the church for our entire lives, but still have not had to believe. Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, unless I can put my hand in his side, I will not believe, Thomas declares. We can testify that we've been in church since we were born. And we have eaten the equivalent of 14 loaves of bread in small communion cracker measures and an entire orchard of grapes in tiny cups. We could have heard 260 plus sermons, sang 13,600 hymns and songs of praise. We could have hung out with Jesus fans and even wore the t-shirt and still not believe. Thomas was there. How could he not believe? He was there when Jesus preached the sermons. He was there when Jesus broke the bread. He was there when Jesus committed, did the, the miracles and the, the signs to cause people to believe. He was there. He heard Jesus say, the reason the Father loves me is that I laid down my life only to take it up again. He was there. He was there. When Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you, and if I go, I will come back and take you with me. He, he was there when Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And before long, the world will not see me, but you will see me. Thomas was there. Thomas, hello. <laughs> you heard the sermon? You heard the scripture? You heard the word? You walked with Jesus. You sat at his feet. You ate from his table. And you did not actually believe because you did not have to believe. But in times of crisis, in times when the one that you followed for these three and a half years 
is, is arrested and tried, crucified and buried. In times of crisis, when children are wayward, when marriage is on the rocks, when our health is under attack, in times of crisis, of COVID-19, we are given a reason to need to believe in Jesus. I'm saying that the times that we're in right now are times when we need to believe like never before. Because in these times, we can't control, we can't predict, we can't coerce, we can't manipulate or dictate the outcomes of our lives. We can't dictate who gets the virus, who doesn't get it, who dies, who lives. We can't even just up and go where we want to go. When we want to go, we don't know what's going to be open, what's going to be closed. Is it going to be tulip time? No, there's not. We don't know about graduation. No, CJ, there's not. We don't know about graduation. We don't know about funerals. We don't know about weddings. We don't know about School next year, we don't know anything we need to believe in Jesus because only God knows. Might be, this might be the first time some of us need to believe. To, to, to believe that, that, that God is our refuge and strength for our loved ones who we can't touch or embrace. That God is working all things for our good, although it might not look good or feel good. That he, God, Jesus, is the resurrection and the life for those that we lay to rest with only 10 or 11 gathered. We, we might have to admit that this is the first time that we are confronted with the truth that there will be a separation of goats and sheep, of wheat and tares. This might be the first time that we've had to grapple with the fact that not all will enter into the joy of eternal rest in the arms of God in eternity with our faithful ones who've gone before us. This might be the first time that we have to reckon with the fact that some will be held accountable for their lack of love, lack of faith, and living a life that rejected the state, reflected the state of unbelief. This might be the first time for some of us to have a reason to believe. I need to see, I need to feel, or I'm afraid I won't believe. It's okay. It's okay because your confession of doubt can actually build a bridge to believe. That's right. Our confession of doubt to ourselves, to each other, to God, most importantly, can build a bridge from doubt to belief because Jesus is that bridge. Jesus is the bridge between our homes and our loved ones on respirators in the hospital. But it's okay for us to confess, Lord, well, well I, 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 I'm not sure if I believe that there's comfort there if I can't be there. Jesus is a bridge between graduation and a college you never visited because it's okay. For us to say, I, I don't know, I don't believe that maybe you have already gone before me and established a way. Jesus is a bridge from, from, from life as we knew it in church as we knew it before corona and after. Even as we say, Lord, I don't believe things will be okay. I don't think that things will ever be as they once were. It's okay. In these times to declare, I don't believe that you are the resurrection and the life for my beloved who was taken away. I'm scared, I'm angry, I'm confused, and I find it hard to believe the unbelievable. I don't believe the words of Jesus because I've never really read the words of Jesus. I don't believe the promises made because I I don't know what the promises are. I wonder if we can just be honest with God today. 
I'm a churchgoer. I'm a disciple. I'm a baptized believer who's never before had to believe. But if I see him, when we be honest with ourselves, I, I, I may not have always had to believe, but, but if I could just see something, if I could just feel something, I, I want to believe. It's a time to talk to God. We got plenty of time to talk to God. But if I could see him, if I could, if I could just feel him, then because I, because I want to believe. And then, and then watch this. Watch what happens in the text. The text says, a week later, pause. I just want to say, I don't know how long after we admit this. I don't know how long after we cry. I don't know how many times we got to say, Lord, help me believe. But for Thomas, it was a, it was a week later when, when the disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. And though the doors were locked, though there was no way, Though there was no access, though it seemed that all was lost and forsaken, there, as the doors were locked, Jesus came in and showed up and stood up among them and said, never mind what he said for a minute. Did you hear what I said? I said, Jesus showed up among them. And when we declare unto the Lord, I will not believe until I see, until I hear, until I experience when we're honest, with ourselves about our faith and our deficiency, Jesus will show up. No coronavirus will prevent him. No lockdown order, no judgment, no shame, no guilt will prevent Jesus from showing up, declaring, peace be with you. Peace unto your confused mind. Peace unto your anxious heart. Peace unto all of the, the walls and things that are preventing you from needing to believe. Peace be unto you. And then he, he walked up to Thomas. Thomas, who must have been side-eyed by the other disciples. Thomas, who must have been ridiculed and ostracized because he had the nerve to doubt. He had the nerve to say, I have to see with my eyes and I have to touch with my hands. He must have been, he might have been an outcast amongst the other disciples. He might have been a source of their snickering and their whispering. But Jesus walks through the door and marches right up to Thomas and says, look at here, Thomas. Touch me right here. Because that's what you said you needed. Put your hand. Put your hand right here. Now, stop doubting and believe. Beloved, I wonder in these, in these days when we need Jesus, perhaps like never before, I wonder if we can look for Jesus to show up in impossible ways and places. I wonder if we can look for Jesus to walk through walls and make ways out of no ways. I wonder if we can look for Jesus to tear down doors, to do whatever it takes to reveal himself to you, to me, to us, to declare unto us as he did to Thomas. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Touch me. It is me. Believe me. Don't just believe in me. Believe. Believe my word, believe my promises, believe my testimony. Believe I have risen. I am who I say I am. And then our confession will be my Lord, my God. My Lord means that I acknowledge that you are the greatest authority over me. You are my example and you are the one I will follow. My Lord, I believe and my God means you are my author, my finisher, my maker, my creator, sovereign and faithful. Fred Hammond said it in a song like this. He said, it goes beyond, you go beyond all knowledge or anything I've ever known. Bearing what I never could, paid what I owed. Covering my dark side, unconditional you remain. Forever you purify. Yes, my Lord, my God, I, I believe it shall be the confession of a true believer. And Jesus longs to show us, to touch us and be touched by us. Jesus is the bridge between our doubt and our true need 
for him. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we thank you for the gift of your word, for the manifestation of your spirit. God, would you stir down deep into our hearts? Would you break the bricks off of our hearts? And you might find a heart of flesh conducive to the seeds of your word that it might, they might go down deep, take good root, grow up like trees planted by rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season for your glory, which is for all of our good. In the name of Christ, our beloved one, the one we need to believe. Sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. There's a hope that lies within, and it reassures. As you keep your eyes upon the distant shore, I know he'll lead you safely to that blessed place God has prepared. But if the storms in your life don't cease, just in case the wind keeps on blowing in your life, family, Midas family, Morfield family, though the storms keep on raging in your life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day, there's a hope that lies within, and it's reassured. Keep your eyes up on the distant shore. I know he'll lead you safely to that blessed place. God has prepared. But if, if the storms in your life don't cease, uh, and just in case of the wind, In the Word of God, I've got an anchor, and it keeps me steadfast and unmovable, just like a rock that is solid rock in Jesus. And if, if the storms in your life don't cease, ha, just in case the winds keep on. 
Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. And so, beloved of God, as we prepare to go forth from this place of worship corporately yet separately, we know we never go from God's presence. And as we go back to homeschool and back to dinner and lunch and the life as we know it, we should know we don't go alone. We go together, always together. And God goes with us. So may the love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, and the peace and hope of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, be, and abide with all of us, both now, henceforth, and forevermore, as we go in that peace. Amen. Shakers may dash, I will not pass because he holds me fast. So dark the day, tonight in the sky, I know it's all right, because Jesus is not in my soul. an anchor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.